Have you heard of the Centennial Light? It's the world's oldest light bulb. It was first lit in the year 1901 and has been on ever since. That's 120 years. This tiny bulb has not been switched off for an astonishing 120 years. Obviously, it wasn't made in China, just in case you're wondering. It's in California. It continues to shine faintly at a fire station there. Now, for those of us who have junked more things in our life than we can remember, the centennial light's longevity may seem like an insult. If a bulb made with 19th century technology can last this long, why don't the advanced modern day products last? Products made with 21st century technology, why do they wear out so quickly? Why do we junk them, replace them rather than repair them? We can blame ourselves for failing to value old things like our parents and grandparents did. Mend and reuse. In today's world, driven by consumerism, mending something has been called an act of defiance. You fly in the face of an entire system that wants you to keep buying more. It's a sinister business model. It's called planned obsolescence. Obsolescence comes from the word obsolete. When something is obsolete, it is no longer relevant, it is no longer used or simply out of date. Planned obsolescence means you plan for something to become obsolete and out of use. It's basically a mix of different business strategies that are used to make a product seem undesirable, useless and unwanted. The ultimate goal is to make you replace the product, to make you keep buying it again and again. How do companies do that? By installing parts that are bound to fail, by making your product incompatible with others, like a new operating system, by introducing a new updated model every year, or by simply denying you the right to repair. Meaning, if something is broken, you don't have the right to repair it. You'll be forced to replace it. This is an evil business strategy, one that is finally being called out. Hello and welcome to Gravitas Plus. I'm Palki Sharma Upadhyay. We are living in an age where an average consumer buys a gadget knowing it will wear out very soon. We know what we buy will soon be outdated because a new upgraded model will be released soon. A shinier, better looking version of the same device. Some of us are tempted to buy the new version. Some of us don't want a new version. But a lot of us buy it because we don't have a choice. Because once a new model is introduced in the market, here's what happens. Your smartphone slows down to a point where it is almost unusable. Your gaming console requires one too many resets. Your laptop screen starts flickering. Why can't you repair them? It's inconvenient, it's difficult, and often impossible. A lot of devices cannot be fixed at your local repair store. That's because companies own the right to their own design and software. They dictate who can fix your device and who cannot. And they make repairing a very expensive affair. Even for basic repairs, like replacing a shattered screen or a depleted battery, you're charged hefty sums and left at the mercy of the manufacturer. So what do you do? Most of us end up buying a new product. Studies have proven this. When products begin to fail, most people are inclined to buy new things rather than fix the old ones. It doesn't have to be this way. Do you know there's a global campaign called Right to Repair? People, consumers like us, have been pushing companies and governments to give them the right to repair. They finally have a win. Apple has given in. Apple has announced a self-repair program, which basically means that customers can fix their own device. I'm talking about the tech-loving do-it-yourselfers. You can now head to an Apple store, online or offline, to buy parts, tools and manuals to do your own repairs. This program will focus on the most common things that need fixing. Your camera, screen and battery. For Apple's clientele, this is a big deal. Why? Because it will save them the expenses. But you won't have to rely on those costly Apple stores or those shady third-party repair shops. You would be able to do it yourself. What if you don't own an Apple product? Well, then you'll have to wait or push the right to repair. It's a very interesting piece of legislation that activists and tech companies have fought over for decades. If we were to define it, the right to repair is a concept that allows consumers the right to repair or service their own device without any legal or technical restrictions. The idea behind it is to make electronics easier and cheaper to fix, not to mention increase their life cycle.
This right could apply to every product, cars, laptops, cell phones, every electronic device you own. With this right, you can ask manufacturers to provide you with products that can be self-repaired, parts that are used to repair those products, and manuals and guides to help. How did this concept come into being? It first emerged in the United States in the American auto industry in the year 2012 after many failed attempts, activists in the U.S. auto industry got the Right to Repair Act passed. This first happened in the state of Massachusetts and then several American states followed suit. Then in 2013, a digital Right to Repair coalition emerged. This one advocated for repair laws in the electronic industry. It tried making tech companies approve the Right to Repair. The big flashpoint came in the year 2017. iPhone users came across evidence that Apple was purposely slowing down the speed of older models. Why was Apple slowing down old phones? To force you to buy newer ones. So consumers pushed for legal action. Apple responded by reducing the service charge for repairs. Two years on, it has finally given in. Apple has agreed to the right to repair. It's a big win for consumers. One that opens a lot of doors. If Apple, one of the world's most valuable public companies, can bend before the will of consumers, why can't the others? The debate is picking pace. Several tech giants are complying, like Microsoft. It has also embraced the right to repair. Starting next year, it will offer consumers the right to fix their own device. Efforts are also being made in the European market. They started way back in 2017. The European Union Parliament approved a few recommendations for member states to pass. In July 2021, the British government accepted the recommendations it passed the right to repair law. Appliance manufacturers have been asked to provide customers with simple and safe repairs. They've been given a two-year grace period to execute this. In France, a repairing score system has been introduced. It makes repair a buying criterion for every purchase. Companies are being graded based on this. And this has resulted in the disclosure of many repair manuals that were not available previously at least in the case of Samsung. So what exactly is driving the argument for this? A lot of things. You keep big companies in check. You make them accountable for their products. You reduce the cost of repair for consumers. You shift from a lifestyle that celebrates disposing things. Also, this is unsustainable. It's hurting the world we live in. Manufacturing an electronic device is a polluting process. According to one report, the mining and manufacturing materials used to make an iPhone represent 83% of Apple's carbon footprint. The more such products, the more the pollution. Then there is the business of small repair shops. They're a very important part of local economies. If one big manufacturer has monopoly on repairs, the smaller ones suffer. The right to repair could change all of that. But the most interesting factor driving this campaign is perhaps the art of repair. The desire to mend a cherished item yourself. Be it a broken toaster, a TV set from the 90s, or a radio of generations past, a lot of us like repairing things ourselves. For some, it's a compulsion. For some, it's a hobby. And for some, it's a way of life. In Japan, it's an art form. It's called kintsugi, meaning the golden repair. It's a technique to repair broken pottery with gold dust. Then you have darning. Some of us learned it while growing up. It was to make us understand the beauty of preserving what's broken or frayed. It's becoming a forgotten art. This whole culture of disposing and replacing rather than repairing and reusing has been thrust upon us. In India especially, frugality was part of our tradition. You may have heard of kantha, a centuries-old technique stitching patchwork cloth from rags. It's an art form now, a testimony to our thrift. There was a time when a repair toolbox was a must in most Indian households. We used things judiciously. But now we are slowly succumbing to the throwaway era. We are falling for newer models, cheaper commodities and fast fashion. The right to repair movement is an opportunity to undo a lot of this. It focuses on electronics, but it can essentially apply to everything. Help us value the concept of repairing. It's picking pace globally. India too should consider enforcing the right to repair. <laughs>